Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Configuration as Code project meeting. Today is August 12th, so it's just uh, the middle of uh, summer break. So we have uh, two contributors on the call, Tim and me. And I doubt that we are going to have uh, more participants today. So we will run uh, uh, through the standard agenda, unless there are more topics to it. Okay, so is my screen visible? Yep. Okay, mm, so yeah, summer break, we kind of discuss it. Um, and yeah, we have um, system audit permissions uh, coming in the next LCS. So there will be a lot of uh, changes to this spring as a part of your UX hackathon and afterwards. And these changes are landing uh, in LTS in September. Uh, so actually I had a question whether we could call it SGA or whether we need more to do that. Yeah, I think we should be able to. Um, I think it was all in the 235 LCS, I think. Yeah, it was available there. Or did may maybe plugin manager must it? Maybe no. Mm. Uh, the uh, if I recall correctly, a tool page uh, has missed uh, um, the LTS and also the view plugin compatibility issues. Uh, because yeah, I'm just uh, logging in uh, into the yeah. Epic. I think it was the I think it was the agent configuration actually that missed the LTS. Well, we can uh, check it easily. Okay. So let's uh, take a look. So here in the Epic, we still have uh, some tasks uh, which haven't uh, been addressed yet. Um, but TA agents, um, your access for agent extended read, right? Yeah. So uh, 38. So, yeah. so that must but, have so basically uh, it means that we will have agent read permissions in GA. And yeah, also plugin compatibility. So here we still have um, quite a number of tasks to be completed. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, I don't think that it's really a blocker for GA. They're, they're all minor and anyone can do them if they want to. Mm -hmm. All the core yeah. features are needed are, are there. Okay. And the force, I guess, so right now it still remains beta API, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe this is something we well, we can actually update the API retrospectively, or we can say that, okay, if uh, this API didn't change, we call it G anyway, just to remove uh, the beta flock in um, the weekly releases. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all we need to do is just change, change the, you know, remove beta and um, have it enabled by default. Mm. Enable uh, the permission by default. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is a good question because extended read for jobs is not enabled by default. Yeah. Um, it, is it well, something? I think it should be. Um, so it was introduced in 2009 with a for a beta period <laughs> as disabled by default. Uh, with someone going to come along later and enable it by default. Um, I mean, one objection I've previously heard is that um, the, the matrix auth plugin looks bad if there's too many permissions. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what if you're working on UX improvements in Jenkins? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm personally I'm in favor of enabling them by default, and uh, I guess enabling uh, system read would be also in the same uh, pull request. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so enable all the three uh, permissions in a uh, weekly. And yeah, I think that it, in such case, it makes sense to say that uh, the next uh, LTS will be the LTS where system read be becomes uh, GE. Yeah. It doesn't change much in uh, principle, uh, but yeah. Gives, gives more exposure. Mm -hmm. like, chances are it's already, um, already enabled on a lot of instances anyway, if, because if they update, mm -hmm. make the door, I think they get it installed. Mm -hmm. but, yep. yeah, yeah, anything on the latest, it's, it's basically installed on any instance that updates because they've mm -hmm. got a dependency that a plugin which automatically enables it. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, for us, yeah, we still have some open items. I believe that uh, we can just uh, list uh, this topic for October 1st, etc. So, hopefully, some of them uh, will be eventually updated. But yeah, personally, I agree with you that uh, all critical stuff is there. I have uh, a system read permission enabled on my instance. I'm totally happy with that. Yeah, maybe monitoring would be cool, but yeah. Monitoring is a bit tricky because uh, it has uh, management uh, layers, it has uh, read-only layers. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it uh, basically provides all UI uh, uh, from external components. So it's not something like we can easily fix that. So. Oh, the nicest one to do really would be that. Read only Jenkins improve pipeline view when using a job. Uh, read only Jenkins pipeline view? Uh, yeah. Up one. Uh, uh, 62410. That, uh, that one. Uh, that's, probably, that's probably the biggest. The nicest one. Yeah, but it's still an improvement. Yeah, it's an improvement. It's not. Mm. It's just a, it's just a UI improvement. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think that we can actually um, uh, act, um, act on that. Yep. Uh, so. Yeah, maybe if you have bandwidth to submit a pull request, uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I should be able to the next day or two. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's uh, better to actually do it in September so that we announce it when uh, there are more people around, just uh, to get more feedback. But yeah, technically speaking, uh, we can uh, proceed at any moment. It's no rush to manage it. It doesn't really have any impact for months. <laughs> right. So, yeah, for me. Okay. So, any other news? I think there's been one release. I'm not sure if so there was there. Well, there's been two releases. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So this one was, yeah, we haven't had meetings uh, since uh, 41, I guess. Mm. Yep, yeah, 42. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here yeah, we have uh, had a breaking change uh, for secrets management, uh, but at the same time, uh, now you can uh, provide the files and uh, have a variable expansion. So it's a great step, and thanks a lot for, to Joseph for doing that. Uh, speaking of uh, past and encrypted secrets, still on my plate. Still in my hall of shame. Yeah, there's been a few uh, people asking me about it every now and then. Hmm? Sorry? There's been a, the odd users came along asking about it. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope I will get to that. No, no, but yeah. No. Still, 
uh, even if I do not do that, uh, uh, request from Joseph already provides a great foundation because yeah, you have some support. So, and I guess uh, there was no major changes in this release in addition. No, we got some documentation improvements. Uh, thanks to everyone uh, to, uh, who contributed to it. In 1.43, so yeah, we had validation message fixes, also some dependency updates, uh, but yeah, I guess uh, nothing uh, super significant to talk about. Right? No, not really, just that mm -hmm. there was a big core UX improvement um, broke our validation message on the buttons. Uh, oh, it's part of life. Uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, it looks uh, pretty well these days. Yeah. So I think that the plugin is pretty stable. Um, and yeah, we kind of keep polishing it, but it definitely does the job. Uh, so I think that uh, it's in a pretty good shape these days. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, thanks for reminding about releases. Okay, anything else? Or should we go to ongoing development? Okay, so system read permissions, I believe we discussed it above. Uh, well, Jenkins configuration as code to say there is not that much ongoing development, right? Right now. So we have a number of pull requests, mostly thanks to Dependabot. So you can merge the latest one. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can merge it later, but I'm happy to approve it. Mm -hmm. Well, especially since it's in the test scope. Uh, but yeah, I think that our um, main uh, objective right now is not uh, improving JCASC itself, but uh, improving user experience around that. So like system read permissions, and maybe future integrations. But yeah, I believe that for JCASC uh, engine, we will still have a bunch of uh, improvements to deliver in the future. There's one PR here uh, for me, the third one. That's uh, mostly, it's not an improvement. It's, uh, I discovered probably a bug somewhere between JCASC and um, uh, SnackML. And mm -hmm. so here it's just to, to reproduce and open the discussion. We, we discuss a bit with uh, Tim about that. Um, uh, but yeah, um, basically uh, when you have um, a double as a class uh, in your configuration, um, if you don't use a string to configure them. Um, mm -hmm. They are um, initialized as null and not even with a, a, a correct value. And um, yeah. looks like a bug somewhere. Oh. Yeah, I don't know many plugins uh, using double. Uh, do you have examples of, of plugins? Um, open source ones? No, sorry. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, it was really to to open the discussion. It's not to, because I don't have really a solution. Uh, mm -hmm. I just don't remember that and thought it was good to, uh, mm. to yeah. let it so, surface somewhere. Yeah, so the string looks, uh, works well. And, and also, yeah, and so the, the, the main issue is uh, for a UX point of view, uh, when you do the export of the configuration, you will get um, a double as, uh, as you expect as this, uh, this form. But if you configure with the, basically if you configure your, your instance with what you just is exported, it won't work. Uh, you'll get, you'll mm -hmm. get a new value. So there's yeah. a yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's a valid defect for sure. Yeah. If it happens like that. Stepping through on a debugger or trying to yeah. find out where it gets lost. Because if you if you do it yeah. directly with Snake Gamble, it works, right? So it's I, I tr yeah, I tried to, to create I, I created the bug here because um when I debugged it it was uh somewhere uh in inside um a Snake Yamal, but I wasn't able to reproduce anything inside Snake Yamal. 
um, mm -hmm. through through the tests. Um, so I I thought that maybe it's because of the it's maybe uh, because of the infrastructure, the, the the class structure of the configuration itself, or something like that. Um, because you have um, uh, in SnakeML, you have a method to uh, I think it's the uh, two-step constructor, something. I, I normally I, I put the description on on the on, on the pull request, but. Um, when I was using directly SnakeML, I wasn't able to go through that that method, and uh, but I am am able to reproduce on on yeah uh, with uh, Jenkins configuration. Mm -hmm. So for floats, uh, I believe that the round trip uh, works well, at least from what I remember, there was test coverage. So the first focus would be to actually just see whether uh, there are any differences between uh, uh, float and uh, double in the code. Uh, yeah, maybe something like that, but I'm not sure. Is it that? <laughs> uh, sorry? Is it this, or do we set, do we set the floating format on the, in the previous line? Uh, so what do you mean? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, scalar. Uh, yes. Yeah, so basically, a case floating. So I believe that we have only one uh, scalar for what floating. So here it might be converted to float, and then uh, it doesn't get converted properly. I'm not sure. But yeah. So for me, this part would be suspicious. Yeah. And it's probably mostly that no one's really used double before. Well, stay tuned for big integers and other actively used types. Okay. So anyway, thanks Adrian for reporting it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for plugin installation manager, um, so Kim, you have been working on that recently. Yep. Just wanted to get automatic updates. So yeah, we released the to the zero. Yep. So two dot zero dot zero. Um, includes a lot of um, fixes to try and make it behave how you'd expect. Um, so there were some minor bug fixes where um, things like previous dependency versions, so dependencies could pull in newer versions of plugins that you've explicitly declared. Um, so that's mm -hmm. disallowed now. Um, plugin dependencies will always pull the latest version by default, which is how Jenkins core and the install plugin script works. Um, which means that you won't, you won't get out of date plugins by default. Um, so yeah, you still have a chance to get a uh, broken dependency tree in the current version. Yeah. But so. It, yeah, okay, that's a different issue. But yeah, it's net improvement for sure. Yeah. The um, biggest new feature in this is um, the ability to update existing plugins files. Um, so you can, you can ask when you when you look, look for available updates, you can um, output it in a, a machine passable format, um, either YAML or TXT, or you can just view it and stand it out as well. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Does it uh, retain comments? Does it what? Uh, does it uh, retain comments in the divs? No, it can't. Um, mm -hmm. So snake, snake YAML doesn't support comments at all. Mm -hmm. um, TXT, possibly it could. Um, but yeah, yeah, comments is just not easily retainable. Well, I, I did investigate part, it. Yeah, it's a part of life. Uh, so yeah, maybe we could just actually add support for just comment field in YAML. Well, it would be awkward, but uh, it's something we could uh, use as a workaround. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And even things like being able to pin it so it doesn't automatically try and update it as well. So what it means is that soon we won't uh, need to uh, form XML input and depend on what, maybe. Well, you still can't get depend on with this. So that, that's, that's the main feature it's missing. You can set up a job which runs every week and updates them for you. We, we're just currently just, whenever we update them, we run the script. It's, it saves like 20 minutes of painfully updating plugins. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, basically, uh, that's what I did uh, originally, but uh, in my case, it was just uh, bash script with a lot of regex. But yeah, this implementation is better for sure, and uh, it's great to have it available. And yeah, what also showing available updates as API. This is also a good improvement, and yeah make uh, the latest by, uh, by default. So we killed Wiremock. Sorry, we, we killed Powermock. No yes. longer a dependency. But yeah, now you use Wiremock. Because yeah, personally, okay. I would uh, kill all of them uh, and just write integration tests. But yeah, uh, still uh, it's- you wanna, wait, you, you wanna wait 10 seconds when the test starts up, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm, I uh, so when I was working on dependency resolution, I actually did some steps uh, to improve, to create a kind of test framework. Uh, but yeah, uh, I believe that YMOC with this implementation is definitely much better than uh, like it was before. Was I, I before. ended up removing most of those tests in a follow-up anyway. There's only one test left, which uses YMOC. Um, because the test became invalid when I rewrote it to um, resolve the update center URL correctly. Mm -hmm. so previously, it was guessing update center URLs based on the folder path structure, um, which is getting removed. Um, so, use version parameter to resolve update center correctly. Mm -hmm. Bug fixes. Okay, that's good to know. Um, yeah. Thanks for getting it over the line. Okay, mm, yeah, that's uh, great uh, that there is some progress there. So yeah, I guess we will need 3.0 eventually. Uh, but yeah, this version is uh, much more stable. How many downloads has there been, by the way? Could you just scroll down? Sorry? Could you scroll down? Oh. You can't see it. Yeah, you can see it. Maybe it's an extension that does it. Uh, so this is a draft. For draft, there is no assets, but below, yes. Uh, 230 downloads. Mm, yeah, maybe I have a vanilla browser. Yeah, I have. I think my Chrome extension is adding it next to it. Must be an API for it. Um, I think we can just do it here. I'll probably submit a pull request later. Mm, yeah, that would be nice. Because, yeah, there are shields. And in shields, uh, there are downloads for GitHub releases. Right, yeah. And yeah. Let's see, GitHub. Uh, okay, so for all the releases, for example, why not? It's just Jenkins CCI and Jenkins installation manager. I'll submit a pull request later, but it should work like that. Yeah, 12,000. Cool. Okay. Yeah, but just so nice. Yeah. So yeah, nice to see that it's working well. And thanks for API because it's what I actually need in Jenkins File Runner. So in Jenkins File Runner, I started integrating the plugin installation manager. So there is a pull request for that. One thing I stumbled to is just a problem of uh, plugin installation manager inside uh, Jenkins File Runner because it basically had no parameterization at all. So you cannot pass custom update center, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So here you can see that basically right now all is commented out uh, by defaults. And 
to be honest, I'm actually thinking about alternate approach, uh, just uh, embedding CLI right inside the Jenkins file runner. So splitting with CLI and uh, adding um, command uh, plugin manager or so, and just embedding uh, the library ent entirely. You should be able to set a custom update center in the config builder. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, I, I just uh, didn't do that because if I do it like that, then I will have to manage all of that throughout uh, the code. Yeah. So I really can see the options uh, just adding CLI and uh, delegating everything there. Because yeah, for me in uh, Jenkins file runner, it already became uh, quite complicated uh, because yeah, it has uh, a single level uh, CLI now. So for example, there is a command which basically flips to the table and switches it uh, to the uh, CLI mode, etc. Uh, so having a two-level uh, command line structure would be beneficial anyway. But yeah, anyway, I'm going uh, to integrate it soon. I just switched uh, to performance, uh, but yeah, uh, it's in progress. And for Docker images, have you already integrated the pull request? Uh, I think it's waiting on you. Oops. Uh, plugin installation manager. Yeah, that's definitely is waiting on me. Okay. So would it be fine if I do it tomorrow? Uh, after today, because today we have uh, a release. Yes. So, so just in case our release automation uh, goes wrong, I would rather prefer to have it landed tomorrow. Yes, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's great to see the uh, landing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other activities related to plugin installation manager? No. Okay, yeah, Jenkins file runner. Uh, we slightly discussed plugin uh, installation manager. Um, uh, actually, um, I experienced another issue which uh, might be interesting for this group. Um, it's related to Groovy hooks. So the thing with Groovy hooks is that uh, right now there are only two ways uh, to pass. One is through Jenkins Home, another one uh, through bundling as a resource and word file. Uh, yeah, in the case of JCASC, we have also a way to uh, configure the thing uh, by passing the environment variable. And uh, this way is not available uh, in a Jenkins file, uh, well, in, J uh, in Groovy hooks. And at the same time, Jenkins file runner cannot use either of these ways because uh, there is no uh, fixed Jenkins home at the moment. And uh, uh, if you don't uh, package the word file using custom word package, then yeah, it doesn't work. So there actually I had to opt out uh, to just configuration as code Groovy. Um, because, well, it works for me, uh, but yeah, I wonder what is uh, the current status of this plugin? Uh, because yeah, there is no active development. At the same time, it just works. So I'm not sure whether it needs any active development. I've never used it. Mm -hmm. Well, you write everything in YAML. <laughs> in my case, I use too many ifs for that. Mm -hmm. I just customize and merge the ML files. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, finally, so I'm uh, trying to get Sergeant to say runner over the line uh, to have integration testing for um, uh, Jenkins pipeline library. So here, basically what I can be of this is that yeah, I also switched to, to another packaging floor, floor. And yeah, so the JCASC now looks like, uh, where it is? There should be a YAML file here. Yeah, so basically just adding three files. 
but yeah, I wonder whether we need better capabilities and the Jenkins score if you want to keep maintaining Groovy hooks. Because my use case, well, it's not exactly an edge case, just a patch. Okay. So anyway, yeah, in Jenkins file runner, I plan uh, to uh, create a bit more uh, patches for better JCASC support. Uh, because uh, I started prototyping with uh, moving Jenkins file runner to CRDs and basically with image controller and other things. And yeah, then uh, JCASC becomes a bit more tricky there. Okay. For bill of materials, uh, again, we have a dependency issue, right? Yeah. Um, I think it might be on the Jackson 2 API one. Basically, yeah, clashes with our mm -hmm. data format YAML coming from our test harness. Yeah, I believe I hit it in other component. No, we hit it all over the place. Uh, yeah. So basically, yeah, you have. Well, so one easy fix would be to just uh, depend on uh, Jackson data format and set uh, configuration as code. No, it would uh, pull in a uh, fixed dependency. But Inside configuration is code. Yeah, uh, so if there is a use case for basically JSON management in a configuration as code, you could just add dependency on Jackson API, hence there would be no these issues going forward because uh, Jackson API would be coming from BOM always. Can we add it to the test harness or is that not going to work? Mm, no, it's not going to work like that. Uh, that's the problem. Because, uh, yeah, well, technically you in uh, Jackson, uh, in the configuration as code test harness, you can add uh, the dependence on Jackson API plugin. Mm. Because in uh, such case, it will be still consumed as jar and it will work. So the downside of that is that, well, actually it could work. So uh, I believe that uh, we already uh, declare dependencies on plugins in uh, the test harness, right? Because we need uh, JCASC. It should be very, it should be quite light. Uh, so we are checking beta bind, the beta format. No, we don't, uh, well, we depend on the configuration as code as plugin there. Yeah. So, yeah, basically we could add uh, the same dependency on a Jackson plugin. In principle, it shouldn't change anything for users of the framework, except the fact that uh, if they use uh, Jackson data format library, well, uh, Jackson API, then uh, they will have to resolve uh, conflicts. Uh, but yeah, I believe that it's not a big deal. Yeah, I think that should fix it if we mm -hmm. pull it in the test harness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So basically it removes these two dependencies. Uh, yeah. So what we have, system rules, flex mark. So this uh, unlikely to conflict with anything. JSON schema. So well, this one may conflict, but I'm not aware about uh, its usage anywhere else. So yeah, I believe that uh, once we remove Jackson dependency, it should be quite sustainable. And you can take Jackson dependency from the bill of materials here. So you won't even need a version. The problem is that we need the next version of the Jackson one, which is the one that has the YAML version in it. <laughs> but Bond can't update to it until we fix this. Do you really need it? Do we need? Uh, the latest version. Uh, it's only the latest version that includes the YAML um, Jackson data format dependency. Oh, then, yep. Then uh, you will have to pin it for a while. But yeah, yeah. anyway. We pin it here and mm -hmm. pull it from BOM afterwards. 
But here it will definitely. Yeah. Cool. I've got to go on, by the way. Okay. So one topic I wanted to discuss uh, today, if you have time, is about configuration as code seek. So just to explain uh, the context, I've finally got to rework in Cloud Native Seek. And what I would propose to do is to actually remove uh, configuration as code from here and basically merge it to the configuration as code subproject and call it a special interest group. Because yeah, like, like we discussed before, I do not see so much difference between subprojects and uh, six at the moment. So maybe I would rather merge it uh, to avoid conflicts. Yep, and, sounds good uh, to me. Yeah. So the thing that uh, basically it goes slightly beyond uh, JCASC, uh, but for example, we already discussed plugin installation manager and other things uh, because yeah, basically it's configuration as code experience for Jenkins users. Okay. Right. So, see you. Okay. Bye. So, if you have no other topics to discuss, I think we no, we that's really yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then. Uh, and I will just stop with the recording. And thanks, Andrian. Thanks, team, who had to run to meetings. And yeah, I will publish the video soon. Thanks, Reg. Yeah, thank you too. Bye. Bye.